Greetings. Now I'd like to go through some definitions. Uh, in fact, today we'll talk about the title of the course, Natural Resource Conservation and Policy. What does that really mean? So there are 10 key terms that I want to define um, in this part of the course. And anytime you have a 100 level course, a great deal of the time is spent just on terminology because every discipline has its own terms and it often uses terms that are uh, used in general conversation but used in a slightly different way used much more with much more precise definitions so we need to go through those so that we're sure we're all uh, operating on the same page so today I'm going to talk about just the, the first four natural resource conservation and policy and then we'll continue on with the others. So we'll start with natural. Basically, if you look it up in Webster's, you'll see something like existing in or caused by nature. Now, I could ask you an essay question about are humans included in natural? Generally, when someone says 100% natural, they mean it was not man-made. But are humans themselves natural? I don't know, that's kind of a personal decision, and it's certainly not in Webster's, you won't find it there. But are natural things always good for you? That's another marketing ploy is to say 100% natural, and even if it's arsenic, uh, they assume that it's going to be good for you. But of course, that is not always the case. The next term <coughs> is resource. What is a resource? And I'd like to define it a little differently than maybe other people do. And this is because it's a natural resource management class, we'll use the term with a different nuance. And resource is just one way to meet a need. Traditionally, we've talked only about human needs, that resources are things that meet human needs. But now in, we're increasingly concerned about the rest of the ecosystem. And we'd better consider um, the needs of the ecosystem as well as human needs but it's just one way to meet a need. Now, is a resource always a resource? Well, the answer to that is no. And can you think of an example? That would be one of the questions to have on a test is, when is a resource not a resource, and can you give me an example? Now, I'll give you one right now. Uh, here is a famous quote, the Stone Age came to an end, but not because we ran out of stones. So what does that mean? Stones used to be a major resource. Flint was an important resource. And then uh, we, there's lots of flint left out there, and yet we no longer, it's worth nothing. We no longer consider it really an important resource. Examples of items we no longer use in the same way. Well, flint is certainly one of them. Uranium, which at one point was uh, basically worthless, then very valuable and now it's actually a uh, liability if you have it on your property because of the radiation. Ivory was another one. It was a very important resource at one point in time. It still is traded extensively, but not like it was in 1900 when it was used for billion ba billiard balls. And they realized that we might mo run out. And so in 1900, a great reward was offered for someone who could come up with a substitute for ivory since they could no longer find enough to use for billiard balls and it was making the balls too expensive. So someone came up with plastic and that's how plastic was first invented was as a substitute for ivory. So you can see that resources are not constant. They change over time and that's good news because as we start to run out of one we might find a new one to replace it. So rather than thinking of uh, just the term resource, let's think of the need. So it's not the stone really that we need, but something sharp to cut with or blunt to hit with. So it's not the stone, but it's the use, it's the need. It's not the ivory, but rather something heavy and uh, solid, whatever the uh, characteristics of the billiard balls were that they needed. And it's not necessarily oil that we need, but something to use for fuel. In the past, we used coal for most of our fuel. And uh, before that, it was a whale oil. And at one point, we were worried about running out of whales and not having enough oil, uh, whale oil. 
Well, now that is certainly not the concern. Whales are still a concern, but not because they're being so used so extensively for their oil. So um, we have found substitutes. Resources change through time. What we consider a valuable resource changes over time. But the question then that we're left with is, will we always find a substitute? Will something always come along in the nick of time sometimes to save us when we're running out? So a vital point, uh, resource at one point may not always be. Um, also, some believe that necessity is the mother in invention and that we will always find a substitute for things that we really need. So is that going to be the case with oil? And maybe we don't really need to worry about running out of oil because as we get close to that point, people will invariably come up with uh, substitutes. I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just saying that that's what some people think. Conservation. This comes from the word conserve, which means to reserve for later use, to keep safe and sound, and to avoid wasteful or destructful, destructive use. It includes both management, which is hands-on manipulation, active management, and preservation, which implies hands-off. We're going to preserve an area. We're not going to be manipulating a lot of it. Uh, policy. The word policy means a set of norms, rules, or laws adopted by an individual, group, or government. So you can have policies. You, may have, you might have a policy where you don't take a class before 9 a.m. That's your basic policy. Or I have a policy that I don't buy things over the telephone. Um, and if you, I tell people, no, I'm sorry, I have a policy I don't buy things over the telephone, uh, they stop. Whereas if I just said I don't like to buy things over the telephone, they might still argue with me. But somehow that word policy just stops them. And so consider why such ha policies are handy. What is it about having a policy that makes it handy? One thing is that it implies that you're going to treat all such cases the same. So that it, it's not negotiable. All of these cases are treated this way and there's no point in negotiating it. So now we have defined natural resource conservation and policy, and we have the title of the course.